May 15th, 2020. This is the date of the last time that the Hive released a fully fledged new game mode called Sky Wars. Fast forward to today though, June 3rd, 2022. The Hive has just released their newest and probably most ambitious game mode ever called the Arcade. In it, it's got some old Hive favorites like Block Drop and Ground Wars, and some game modes that are brand new to the server like The Bridge and Capture the Flak. There's also an expansive hub just for the Arcade with things like a monorail, working elevators, multiple different types of duels, and 16 different parts core courses. In this video, I'm going to go over the Hive Arcade update, talk about all that it has to offer, and discuss whether it lives up to the years of work that were put into it. If you're interested, let's get started. Alright, so a little bit of a disclaimer, as is usual with these early update videos, this one might get outdated pretty quickly. The Hive likes to do relatively fast updates on a lot of the things that they initially release, and so if you're watching this video a few days or weeks after I post it, the info that I say might not be 100% accurate just because I'm recording this literally two hours after the update came out. Either way, like I said earlier, this is probably the biggest update that the Hive has ever done, so let's get into actually talking about it. So one of the things about Arcade is that it's actually got its own hub. You get to it by going through a portal in the main lobby which takes you there, and once you get to the arcade hub, your brain will probably break like mine did if it's your first time there. Just seeing how vast, expansive, and detailed it is, is almost kind of unheard of for a Minecraft server. Someone could find the actual dimensions of it if they really cared, but I think you can see for yourself just how huge this actually is. But let's be real here, I think the average person is probably going to want to play the actual games the arcade has, so we'll get to talking about the hub later. Like I said though, there are two new game modes that have never been on the Hive before, which are Bridge Duels and Capture the Flag. Let's talk about the Bridge first. This is a game mode that's immensely risen in popularity over the past few years, and the Hive has finally created their own take on it. If for some reason you don't know how it works, it's actually really simple. There's a bridge between two bases, and the way to win is to score by going in a basket or a hole of sorts on the other person's base. Most of the fighting happens on the bridge, which almost guarantees that you'll fall off at some point, and if you do, you'll respawn in a few seconds. Most game modes just have Void at the bottom, but for the Hive's they have water, which will kill you over time instead of almost instantly like a void. Also a little bit different with the Hive's bridges, they have almost kits of sorts, which give you a special item depending on what you pick. You've got golden apples, snowballs, or a leap feather, and each of these will be fully replenished every time someone scores. To win the game, you have to reach a score of 3 before the other person does, and one of the really interesting things about the Hive's version of bridge is that there's actually skill-based matchmaking. Basically, this means that when you play matches, you'll be placed against other people of a very similar skill level. If you're not that good, you'll be placed against people that also aren't the greatest, and if you're winning a lot, you'll be placed against increasingly better people. Now, you can't see your actual ranking, and this is by design. The Hive says that this is to prevent toxicity, and they've also disabled chat in bridge games just to reduce toxicity even more. This makes sense honestly, because bridge is known to be one of the more toxic game modes in Minecraft PvP. Overall though, I think the bridge is a really cool addition to the Hive, and I'm definitely excited to play it more and try and improve my ranking. Also, to the people that are saying that the Hive ruined bridge and stuff like that, all I have to say to you is literally get good. If someone's beating you with a strat that you think is dumb, then it's actually just a skill issue if you're losing to it. It's what skill-based matchmaking is for after all. Either way, let's get into talking about the other new game mode called Capture the Flag. It's another game that's relatively simple in concept, but has a lot of depth once you actually play it, and while it can be fun to play, the highest version of it kinda has some problems. Let's talk about it. So Capture the Flag on paper is like really simple. You capture the enemy team's flag and bring it back to your base, and you you also have to defend your own flag from getting captured. There's a shop where you can buy items to help yourself out, and there's also upgrades that can help your team. Now, all of this seems pretty simple and straightforward, but there's one major problem with the Hive's capture the flag that kind of ruins the game in my opinion. You can't place the other team's flag back in your base without having your flag in your base. As a result, this frequently leads to situations where both teams are just sitting in their base with the other team's flag, not really able to do anything. Now, the obvious solution is to just go kill the other team, but it's not that simple because because usually they're just all camping in their base and you're not going to be able to kill the flag carrier. I really hope this gets changed because Capture the Flag on the Hive has a lot of potential to be a really fun game, but at the moment it's really not that fun. Moving on though, there's also two games in the arcade that we've seen on the Hive before, Block Drop and Ground Wars. Block Drop is really simple, self-explanatory, and hasn't changed all that much before. It's very similar to TNT Run with blocks breaking if you run over them, and there's power-ups that you can use to give yourself an advantage or to hurt other players. The last person standing 
Fighting wins. The other game that very much surprised me though was Ground Wars. Now, we've seen Ground Wars as a limited time game multiple times in the past on the Hive. Most notably, it's been rebranded as Snow Wars for the past three Hive Winter events, and it was also a spring event game about three years ago. If I'm being honest though, I never really played Snow Wars or Ground Wars all that much just because it really was never that fun. It was just Turf Wars with not really much changed, and it got pretty boring pretty quickly. However, I was very pleasantly surprised with this version of Ground Wars though because there's been some work put into it. They added power-ups which give the game so much more depth and you've got things like knockback, explosives, even one that lets you tank a hit, and it's actually become somewhat interactive to play. I'm not going to act like I'm going to be main in Ground Wars by any means, and it's probably not one that I'm even going to play that much, but it is nice to see that it's at least improved somewhat, and that it'll be a game that I can go back to and at least have some fun when I want to. Either way, those are all of the main games that are in Arcade, so let's take it back to the hub where there are even more games you can play if, for whatever reason, you aren't all gamed out yet. First up, there's some different micro games you can play like Duels, Nemo Slap, and Spleef. Nemo Slap is a free-for-all arena where everyone has knockback 10 Nemos, and overall it's a pretty fun game to not really take all that seriously. You've also got Spleef, which yet again is fairly self-explanatory. And then finally, there's Duels, of which there are three types at the moment. You've got Basic PvP, which as it sounds just gives you a sword and armor. There's Archer, which just gives you a bow. And finally, there's UHC, which isn't really UHC, it just gives you an axe, snowballs, and blocks. Overall, these duels don't stand out to me too much, but I guess they can be a good thing for if you just want to turn your brain off and fight. Also, like I said in the intro, there are 16 different parkour courses in the arcade hub, and you can get personal best times for each of them. Some of these parkour courses seriously remind me of what we had during the Sonic update, and I definitely think some major inspiration was taken from them in making these. There's also a monorail train in the hub, and while there's not really too much going on with it, I will say that it is a very unique way to get a perspective on the hub. By riding in the train, you can see things that you wouldn't otherwise see by just running around the hub instead. Now, one final thing about the hub, there are golden mailbots scattered all around the hub that you're able to find. There are 100 of them though, so it will be pretty difficult to find all of them, but I would expect that there are YouTube tutorials and walkthroughs on how to find all of them that'll come out within the next few days after this video. So that's basically all you need to know about the Hive's arcade update, and now I think it's time to discuss my thoughts on the update, and more specifically, was the two-year wait for a brand new game mode worth Worth it? Well, first off, my very basic thoughts on Hive Arcade is that yes, I really, really, really enjoy this, and I think I'll have fun playing on it for a while. It's got tons of new content that'll take a while to explore and learn about, and it's very obvious that tons of work went into making it. But to answer the question of whether it was worth it, I think we need to take a little bit of a history lesson back through the past two years on the Hive. So after Sky Wars released in May of 2020, it was a fairly standard rest of the year, just updating the individual games and not really making much of anything new. Come 2021, and there was a spell in the early parts of the year where there wasn't really much of any updates, and quite a lot of people were questioning what the Hive was doing. Well, that thing that the Hive was doing was making the Sonic update, which was multiple months of work for a two-week event. This obviously left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths, and as a result, the Hive made somewhat of a commitment to make more permanent content and not as much limited time content on the server. That way, it could be enjoyed forever instead of just the few weeks that it was out. Near the end of last year, we got big updates like the Treasure Wars and Sky Wars updates, and at the start of this year, we got things like pets. All the while, the Hive was starting work on their arcade update, which eventually culminated into this, and that brings us into today. Now, while all of us have only played arcade for a short period of time, I think it's pretty clear to see that arcade is the basis for new games on the Hive. There's so much potential for stuff that can be done, and it's even been said by Hive staff that arcade is going to be used for testing some new game modes. That's why we see things like the bridge and capture the flag in there currently. Overall, I think all of us would have obviously liked to have seen more content faster and not had to wait two years for a brand new game mode, but as I've said time and time again, developers are human and you can't just make a game mode. That's not how it works. Overall though, I'm generally pleased with the arcade update and I'm happy with what I've seen so far. Like I said, there's a lot of potential for brand new game modes to come to the Hive through arcade, and I think this shows that the Hive is working on adding more permanent content as time goes on and making features featured servers as a whole better for it. If you'd like to see another video about my thoughts on featured servers though, I'd recommend clicking the one that just showed up on screen, but either way, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.